nobody is our enemy. You know, if I, when I speak of people, mm -hmm. they are not our enemy. We need to pray for them. The only thing we have to do is pray for them, speak truth and love. Yeah. Uh, we need to pray for salvation. Uh, this is going to be like, as with the harbinger, that there is an ancient template, an ancient mystery that links to the last days of Israel, links to mm -hmm. Israel's fall from God that is now replaying here. Now, it's going to be, you're going to see it in a whole other realm. And that is that, that it isn't that the people here, the leaders I'm going to speak about, are the people from, obviously, from the Bible. They're mm -hmm. not the same people. But they are, they are following the template. They are, they are playing a part. And they probably don't have no idea that they're doing it. Remember in the Harbinger, you had leaders, you know, who were actually voicing judgment. You had Tom Daschle, you, who, who actually pronounces judgment on the nation. Mm -hmm. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. Mm -hmm. He's saying the exact same things the exact same words that the ancient leaders of Israel said. Now, he isn't the ancient leader, but he's stepping into the template. So the same thing we're going to see here now, okay? So with that said, let's begin. Now, first of all, right, and I'm gonna, the last thing is, I'm going to do this throughout my time here, throughout the week. So okay. other, we'll have other mysteries in between, but we're going to keep on going. until. So it's going to bring it all the way up till right now, okay? So the first thing is that that with the harbinger, it's centered not just on ancient Israel. It's centered on... There were two Israels, north and south. There was the northern kingdom called Samaria or Israel, and there was a southern kingdom called Judah. The center of the harbinger is the northern kingdom. The nine harbingers appear in the last days of the northern kingdom, okay? It involves both, but it centers on that. So here, this too is going to center on the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, let me give you the overall picture. Overall picture is this. Israel was founded by God, or founded for God and his purposes, blessed by God, but in their blessings, they turn away from God. They begin falling, calling evil good and good evil. They oh begin my. driving God out of, their, out of their public squares, out of their culture. They begin taking in other gods to replace them. They begin promoting sexual immorality. They begin to offer up their children as sacrifices to the gods, to Baal. So this, you have a long-term falling, but then in the midst of this template, the falling, you have a king who rises up. And the Bible says that this king did worse or it did than any king before him. He, was, he did things that kings had not done before. Mm -hmm. And that king was called Ahav or Ahab. We know him as that. He's the most famous king of the northern kingdom. And the, what we know of him, he was the seventh king. He had, he was, he, his father was Om, called Omri, who had overthrown the king before him, Zimri, who had overcome the, overthrown the king before him. But he was cunning. He, at the same time, he was morally weak in morality. At times, the Bible records he was driven, incited by his wife, Jezebel. Mm. It's the first time that the Bible speaks of a king and queen, almost as co-regents, going against God. They were, she was behind the scenes, she was behind the throne, she was influencing her husband in leading the nation away from God. Now Israel had already wow. been falling, but the Bible says that Ahab, he accelerated, deepened it. He, under his wife's influence, he championed the worship of Baal. He made it a, the state became allied with Baal, mm -hmm. began enforcing the worship of Baal, and that meant under Baal, you have the killing of babies. Mm -hmm. So he's championing Championing the killing of babies. Also, under Baal, you have sexual immorality. You have in the worship of Baal, you literally have it was called it was sacred rites. You, they called it. You have male and female prostitutes. It was actually a, a religion of immorality. Mm -hmm. Under the worship of Baal, you have the marginal the 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 persecution, marginalization of God's people. He's the one. Ahab and Jezebel go get into war with the people of God. At war with the prophets of God, they try to drive them out. Basically. So here you have all the, you have Ahab accelerating this, quote, new morality for Israel. New morality because it goes against the traditional or biblical morality. What about America? America, as we've seen, has been, America has been 
in this fall, this long-term fall away from God. It didn't start now. It's been going on, I mean, markedly from the middle of the, of the 20th century, 1950s, yeah. 1960s, we begin driving God out of the school, driving prayer out of the school. Then we, we start striking down the Ten Commandments. We're still seeing it today. And then 1973, you've got a major milestone turning point. America legalizes the killing of children. And so and we could say, how do you compare that? How do you compare what Israel's doing, offering up their children on the altars, literally, of Baal? Well, Israel offered up thousands. We have offered up millions. So how do you compare? Well, it, we have done that. This is the sin of Baal coming in. Now, a godly leader, as we, I mentioned last, one of the last times we were here, you can't just blame it on a leader because it's the nation. But a leader represents the nation. A leader can, can, can be a judgment, or a leader can be representing the nation. A godly leader can slow down the fall, or he can turn it around like a Josiah. But an ungodly leader or, or a leader who's going against God can accelerate it. So in America, we don't have kings, but we do. We have presidents. We, that, those are our kings. Mm -hmm. And they have reigns. Their reigns are called administrations and presidencies. So with Ahab, remember, the nation's already falling, but he accelerates it. So America was already falling. But the template of Ahab says that there'll come a leader who will accelerate the nation's fall, the first one to do certain things that no president did before him. This is the Ahab template. There was, was there such a leader? There was, and that's gonna be the beginning of the mystery of kings. We're gonna go through several kings here. But here's the thing. It was after the reign of, it was after the presidency of Ronald Reagan, and then his vice president, George Bush, who became president. But specifically, when no matter what your views are politically, this is not about politics, it's about the word of God. Whatever your views are on that, President Clinton, Bill Clinton, was the first president in American history to openly endorse the killing of babies, openly. He was the first president, without any question, who championed this. He was the first president to remove the protections from the, that were protecting children that actually Reagan had put into effect. On his fourth day of presidency, he legalized he signed uh, executive orders stopping the, stripping the protection of the unborn that Reagan had established. He added to the effect, the, he, he actually televised it, started something called the, Mex the, the Mexico City Policy, which now America would be funding the advocacy of abortion all around the world. U.S. tax dollars would be used to pressure countries to accept abortion around the world. He ordered abortions around the world to, on, on military bases overseas. He sought to require Medicaid to pay for abortion. He sought to remove any parental notification with minors. He sought to pass what he called the Freedom of Choice Act, which would have struck down really any, any protection for the unborn. In the template of Ahab, the sacrificing of children is endorsed for the reason that Baal, Baal worship, you sacrifice your child to get benefits, to get, to get increase, to get profit, that it would bless your fields. Well, under Clinton, he became the first president in American history to sign into law the experimentation on aborted children to bring benefits. That Then came partial birth abortion, where it involved actually the pulling out of children, mo most of their body out, and then, then sucking out the brain, crushing the skull. The, the Congress tried, Congress, uh, they voted to stop this. Clinton vetoed it to defend partial birth abortion. Mm -hmm. Into the template of Ahab, those standing, those standing for the ways of God begin to become persecuted, marginalized. Clinton signed legislation that, that was against people protesting abortion, and actually he came into conflict with Christians all the time. Um, and so now you actually had Christians arrested who were protesting abortion.